All right, do we, are we finally live? I'm gonna pop the chat, get my drawing tool. Got that wonderful Microsoft update. I did uh, tell you, I did, if you go all the way back to 20 minutes ago, you can see I said I need to reboot. It's in the chat. Sound is low. That should be about right when I get this here. Uh, PC is just crawling after this update. Uh, everything is slow. Internet is slow. Well, all right. Guess it's all right because I'm I'm broadcasting, so that's going to slow down a little better. So I don't know. Every everything is weird today. It was one of these things where I, I was actually setting up the webinar. I don't know, forty five minutes ago, and just everything was crawling, just crawling and crawling. So yeah. No, I guess streaming plus pulling. 340 is all right. So I don't know what it is, but you can just, you can hear like the, I don't know what it is. I guess it's the hard disk spinning or is it, I mean, the fans are going like crazy and the, you know, the computer's not, so I, I don't know. Thank you, Microsoft. It's one of these things. I have a perfectly fine computer. I guess I need to buy a new one again. But anyways, yeah, so it's not just the modem. It, it, the machine is slow. I don't know why it's not running anything, but anyways, uh, let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. Please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money you cannot afford to lose. So happy morning, happy Thursday. Jobless claims, surprisingly higher than expected. Yay! Some little more risk off. Nice. Cool. So uh, somebody said earlier today they made 3000 bucks today, right on Otis. Cool. What did you trade Otis to make your three grand? Well, he says that. Hey, by the way, my name is Wayne. Nice to meet you. Thank you for being at Forex. Today, the YouTube community of 14,000 foreign exchange traders. We, uh, we gather as a community to synchronize our watches, align our satellites, and put together trade plans. Not for today, for tomorrow. We're more interested tomorrow today than today today. You should have done today, yesterday. Cool. And you can see in many cases like this, nothing's really happened since I've gone away, right? So let's just refresh our minds here and then I'll move on. Because you're like, Wayne, I don't want to hear it. But we'll get there. So anyways, nice to meet you. Nice to be here. Thank you for being here. Please like, please subscribe, please comment. And please thank our sponsor, TradersWay.com, by visiting TradersWay.com. Open up a demo account today. Please open up a demo account with Trader's Way. It shows them uh, your gratitude. And all they're asking to do, because opening a demo account doesn't cost you any money. You don't have to like pony up a passport or something. It's an easy process. But what they want to do is have the opportunity to earn your loyalty and respect. So they sponsor our community. Please give them an opportunity to earn your loyalty and respect. Tradersway.com, open a demo account. I think this is actually pretty cool. <clears throat> okay, drawing tools way down here. Okay, so, right, we got to say it. The beginning of the month, we were down here. Wow, drawing tools all crazy. Okay, and we said the month of June is going to open up hot and fast. 
because of not our technical analysis and not because of our fundamental analysis, but analysis of behavioral finance <clears throat> had to do with non-farm payrolls and the Fed meeting. Okay. And be, be, back then, we said because of the Fed meeting and because of the FOMC meeting, it's going to open hot and fast. We're going to hit our monthly target, which we estimated to be that price, which is funny because these are weeklies, not monthlies. And then up here, you should, you could simply be done for the month of June. So I went on vacation for a week and spent a week on a beautiful sand, white sandy beach with azure waters. Right? The kind of place where the president of the United States goes on vacation. Cool. And what did I miss? I missed the re <laughs> retracement that would have taken profit away from me. <clears throat> cool. So like a week goes by and it's nothing but down, but you got to remember we were long. Cool. So I, I missed nothing but down. And now w one week later, nothing's happened. <laughs> nice. You got to know when to hold them. Know when to fold them. Okay. Anyways. So now we're trying to like trickle down our economics and trickle it down and try to get something to do something. Okay. But one, one thing you might recognize if you drill in here, one of the things we talked about sort of up here when we're talking about leaving the market, becoming a, a spectator more than a participant is that you will need to adjust, right? You will need to adjust your expectations of the market. We talk very casually about behavioral finance and that we expect based on that analysis to lose volume and volatility. Okay. And in a week, on this pair, for example, we did hardly anything, really. What's the range? We'll call it 64 to 65. So we had a 100 pip range. What about the week before? We were, uh, the week before, the low was 64.80. And 6580. So the week earlier, so right, this is when I left the market. And that week there was a 100 pip range. And the second week there was a 100 pip range. But the week I was in the market, the low was right off the exact moment the market opened. It's 6170. And a high of 65.80. Right? So if we said 62 and that was 66. So anyways, 400 pips. Nice, right? So the, the point here is that there's more to trading than your charts. And your fundies. Because your charts don't trade. Your fundies don't trade. Traders trade. And so traders are a factor. Right? Understanding that can help. So now, right, one of the advice, pieces of advice I gave you in here was that you're going to basically do day trading right? Session trading and scalping. Okay. And by session trading, if you go back to my videos 15 years ago, for example, I called this spot. Day trading, spot trading and scalping. Spot meaning, you know, you're, you're making a trade on the spot based on those conditions and you you only plan on being in the trade, let's say, four hours. 
So an example of a spot trade is selling London Open and taking profit right, you know, right around the New York Open and then selling the New York Open and taking profit at the London close and, and right and that kind of stuff or, tra or trading an Asian fade that you only expect to carry for a few hours. So this is the, the trade of the day. This is the trade for now. And scalping is just, you know, um, I don't know, uh, eating the pe eating the peel off of an orange. Keeps you alive. Okay. Well, a couple of things, Peccary. There is no Ryan's methodology. So, see, that's what I'm worried about. Uh, and I warned you guys about that. Don't think of it that way. You're really going to mess up and confuse. It's price action. It's price action. There is no Ryan's methodology. And because the more you use language like that, the more you're going to separate this from general trading conditions. Okay. Price action is always the proper way to enter a trade. It always has been. Okay? It's how you trade, right? An open of a market. If you're a bear, you're going to sell at resistance. And you're going to time it properly. Okay? It's price action. But, so that works in all market conditions, Becker. What I'm suggesting is not how you enter your trade, but how you, your expectations for a trade. So if you're going to trade at the open of a London session, you're going to trade your bias. And you're going to have your expectations set by whether you believe it's a day trade, so it's going to last 24 hours whether it's going to last like four to eight hours or if it's going to la last a couple of minutes to a couple of hours, right? This is a day, this is a session, this is scalping. What you're probably going to see less of is like a big monthly swing or a big weekly swing, or at least you're going to try to get these, but your expectations are different, okay? So when I'm like, this is going to be a hot and fast week, and then we're going to lose volume and volatility. Dude, first of all, we called this before it happened, and we said after this hot and fast move, we would lose volume and volatility. Well, based on the analysis I just did, volume and volatility has dropped 75%. Only because I exited the market. <laughs> yeah, I'm that big. Oh, uh, Ryan's a coach at FX Bootcamp Live. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, Peccary, uh, 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 and by the way, I hope I'm pronouncing your, your name properly. Uh, I'm, I'm always worried about, you know, showing honor and respect to people. So, when I've never actually met you and shook your hand. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. But, anyways, um, I'm picky on language. And the reason I'm so picky on language is it's part of neuro-linguistic programming. And what most people don't understand if they've never studied NLP, because NLP is weird because it, uh, a lot of people that don't understand it make up things like, oh, well, you're manipulating people. and Like, whoa, dude, whoa, settle down, bro. Um, NLP is most powerful because it uses language to program your brain. For example, most people don't listen to you you're 99% right? of, of what you listen to is your own voice, internal or external. So the voice and the language you use shapes how you think and how you think shapes the actual shape of your brain, right? So I'm very picky with words and I annoy people because very often people say they talk one way, even though it's not grammatically correct. And you have to spend time interpreting what they said into what they actually mean, which I hate. And then writing, oy vey. Most right, people write very poorly. Um, 
So anyways, I'm picky on words and language and word choice. And sometimes English isn't the, the primary language or it's not what you meant, but it's what you typed. And you're like, well, Wayne, I'm just typing in the chat room. All that is true, but I have to acknowledge what you said and coach. So you said what you said, you typed what you typed. I need to, right? I need to do what I need to do. So anyways, yeah. So you're a law student, right? Right? Yeah, yeah. So the little dictators matter, even subconsciously. I'm glad that you agree. <clears throat> okay. But I drive my kids nuts because they say, oh my God, this is so hard. I'm like, it's not hard. It's difficult. A stone is hard. Climbing stairs is difficult. <laughs> They're like, God dang it. This guy drives me nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So anyways. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, yeah, the Ryan thing. Don't say that. Don't say that. Because mentally, you throw everything else out. Okay. So, you have to know, let's say, let's like, sort of like, big to small. You should know fundamentals. And we've discussed this over several webinars lately. If you don't understand how the world works, uh, then good luck controlling the world, right? Okay, fundamentals. And then inside of technicals, so we'll do now technicals. Okay. Um, there's going to be what I believe, and I've always said this, price action. Okay, that's support and resistance of price. And the next thing is pivot points that I really like. But what are pivot points? Pivot points are support and resistance of the market. Okay, so all this is, is you need to understand support and resistance. Okay, not nothing revolutionary here. Okay, and then... Under here, you might even add a subcomponent of um, tr uh, trader psychology, behavioral finance or something. But like pivots, price action, uh, a four hour candle wick or something. Um, they don't predict um, next week or next month or what's going to happen the night of the election, um, uh, stuff like that. And that, right. And that's, that's getting to know what, so there's like why the markets move, how the markets move and, um, who moves the market? Because if you, re if you move the traders, what happens to, right? Let's do it this way, guys. If you, if you removed all the traders in the market, what happens to the market? Huh? Do, do, your, do your technical analysis, does your technical analysis still work? You show up, there's no buyers and no sellers. So now what? Is, is the market going to behave the way you thought? Yeah, well, yeah, huge spread, stalls, like, but nothing happens, right? You're like, well, why did, right? So if you're like, well, this stuff doesn't matter, okay, then remove it if it doesn't matter. So if there are no traders, regardless of the fundamentals, and whatever analysis you use, whatever technical tools you use, nothing will happen. Why? Well, there's no traders. So traders and the psychology of traders must be part of the foundation somewhere, right? You understand? And then traders use technical analysis. Why? Well, they're analyzing price over time. And what are they doing? Identifying support and resistance. And what is support and resistance? From a trader psychology point of view, what is, trader, uh, what is support and resistance? A good price to buy
and a good price to sell. Now here's the interesting thing. Buyers and sellers usually have a reason why they need to do it. A business decision. A business decision could even be you sending money back home to mom and dad. Or you going on vacation because you finally want to see Venice without hordes and hordes of horrible tourists. So you're like, we're going to Venice. We need to buy some euro. Great. Good for you. Okay. Or it could be whether the company builds a factory or not. Or whether the central bank, like we talked about the, the, bank, of, uh, the bank of India the other day, they have the largest reserves of foreign exchange, right, currency and gold, and these kind of notes that central banks trade with each other. Um, they have the largest cash of foreign reserves in the history of the Bank of England. I keep saying England. The Bank of India. So, the Bank of India has cornered the market in a whole bunch of reserves. Probably a lot of U.S. dollars. But probably some pound and euro too. Okay? So why? There's a business need. Well, what is the business need? It has to do with balance of trade. Oh, well, what is trade? Well, the economic activity of India, right? minus the India's consumption of these goods and services, and you have excess, okay? So John Locke would argue way back before the corn laws uh, of 1683 or whatever it was, um, would argue that, well, you can produce extra corn and you own that corn and you can do whatever you want with the corn. You could just let the excess corn that you can't eat and can't plant. You have all this extra corn from your awesome production. You could just let it rot in the fields. You just let it rot. Who cares? Let the, let the crows eat it. Or you could trade it with your neighbor. And your, your neighbor needs some corn. And your neighbor is a carpenter. So he trades you a table and chairs. For your excess corn. You're like, oh, boom. So you trade that. Okay? So anyways, India, for whatever reason, needed to counter effect whatever they saw in their balance of trade <clears throat> by buying foreign exchange currencies, which changes the value of their own currency. Cool. Nice. All based on business decisions. So whether you're deciding whether you want to go to Europe or go to Orlando. So if you're an American, you go to Orlando, nothing happens to the US dollar. But if you decide to go to Euro Disney in France, uh, the dollar weakens and the, and the Euro gets strong, okay? So that's a business decision. It, ultimately, it's all a business decision. If you're gonna spend money, uh, right? You're either gonna consume crap or you're gonna invest it and own an asset. Either way, it's a business decision, but also, Companies make these decisions, right? Industries make this de these decisions, and countries make these types of decisions, okay? So what it all comes down to is you need to know if what you're doing in the market. Are you a buyer or a seller? That's it. And once you've made that decision, and that's a business decision, and then you should mind your own business. So once you've made a business decision, whether you're in this market as a buyer or seller, now you're simply using your charts and your trader psychology and whatever alpha God has, has poured out of heaven for you, you make a decision of what is a good price to buy. So if I'm a, if I'm a buyer, well, let's say I have this set up as bearish. So if I'm currently a seller, I just have to ask myself, is this a good price to sell? Is this a good price to sell? Should I sell now? Well, what about now? Should I sell now? How about now? Should I sell now? Or should I sell later? Okay.
but you kind of have to have all these components. You have to understand why the markets move, how the markets move, and who moves the markets. But that's a very kind of different look at trading, right? So it's kind of cool, okay? It's kind of cool to say, let's make a lot of money this week and then take the next couple of weeks off. Isn't that cool? To know this is likely to happen and then this sideways action is likely to happen and that in starting on this day, and by the way, when was the first time, okay, oh, Otis is a scumbag, oh my god. Too bad. Can someone get rid of them? All right. Um, when was the first time you heard that after the Fed meeting, in June, it becomes summer, and on that day, you will change your behavior and your expectations? When was the first time that you, you heard me teach you this? That everything changes on that one day. Alex didn't have any gray hair and I didn't have any gray hair. When was the first time? Otis says he's not a scammer, but let's try to figure this out. So you are promoting a service by logging into other people's live webinars, spamming them with an advertisement to, to join your group because you make thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars a day, but you can't afford any proper sort of ethical advertising. And marketing campaigns like dude if you're good buy some ads if you're good do some presentation if you're good contact like industry um, organizations that could lend you some you know credibility or respect but dude the fact you come in and spam people for your service is pretty low it's kind of like that that guy we were talking about yesterday or the day before, like you show up to buy $10 million worth of gold from some guy in Ghana and he meets you at a coffee shop because I guess he doesn't have an office and he shows up and he can't afford to pay his taxi bill. So you pay for his taxi, pay for his coffee and you walk away. Like, dude, you make $7,000 a day and you, you can't afford advertising? Oy vey, seriously? <laughs> yeah, well, maybe you'll spend, send him money and he'll trade it for you. But he can't afford, like, let's say, let's say you can't afford to, I bet you don't have a real corporation. You're probably not licensed and registered. Uh, what, what are we going to, I mean, like, gee whiz. Yeah, it's like the lowest of low, right, Maida? Like, really, seriously. Wow, it's terrible, dude. But I'm so glad you're filthy, stinking rich. Apparently, you're making $300,000 a month, maybe $250,000 a month. That's pretty good, dude. You make $250,000 a month. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Um, goodbye. Wow. This guy's killing it. Yeah. Wow. No, my, my God, you should be happy for him. He's making $250,000 a month and he'd like to like spam our group. That's really cool. It makes a lot of sense, actually. <laughs> the sad thing is uh, desperate people might actually listen to him. It's really sad, actually, right?
Yeah. So where's all my moderators? How come I have to do all this, guys? Come on. Here. Cool. Yeah, it's very predatory, right? So anyways, it, it's funny, like, how much money do you have to have in an account to make 4000 in a day or $10,000 a day? Right? So if you're properly trading, let's say you had an awesome month and you made 10% because you're not over leveraged. The market was just crushing it. So your alpha fits the beta. So risk adjusted performance, you produce 10% in a month, but it's justified. Cool. 10%. So you need at least 40,000 in cash. Right? So that's good. I mean, you could totally do that. Right. You see, see what I mean? You could totally do that. Um, and if you have, let's say, a hundred thousand bucks in your account, dude, seven grand. But you shouldn't be doing it in a day, which is the real problem with these kind of spammers. Four thousand in a day. Cool. OK. Yeah, well, whatever. It's just interesting. I just want to point that out like. Um, maybe they'll go away if they realize that we're a very smart, intelligent group and that we're here to seriously learn how to trade and be professionals. So if they know that, they would realize that they should try the Bitcoin guy. The Bitcoin guy's probably got 7,000 people in the chat right now anyway, so it's better. We're a very small group, right? Cool. So anyway, so going back to all this, um, you know, isn't it interesting um, that we've lost so much volume and volatility and now we're stuck in this. But remember, I warned you, situations like this is where you lose your money. Got to be very careful. OK, right. It, I warned you and warned you and warned you if you trade now in the summer the same way you traded this this you're going to be very frustrated and you're going to lose most likely okay so here we are we're making 400 pips a week 300 pips a week 500 pips a week and now we're dropping down to 100 so we've lost like i said about 75 percent of our volume and volatility and if you're not ready emotionally for it and you start to suffer in your trading, you think it's you, what it is is you don't understand the market. Okay? And that's, to me, the biggest thing. And so in our live group, you know, we, we've had lots of people very excited recently uh, because their success has been very good. And then I, I, I come in and I'm like, whoa, 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 settle down. Right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Very good. Very good. Very good. Settle down. Right. Because things might change. And what will happen is your perhaps irrational exuberance. That's not the right word, but can be tempered by reality. And um, you right, like, I don't know, the, I don't have the right words for it in English. And unfortunately, I don't speak another language. Um, but there's always uh, going into summer, you have to temper your enthusiasm. Maybe that's what it is, right? Yeah, <laughs> right. right, Julie's like party. But that was the message, though, right, Julie? Like, hey, awesome, great. Glad you're you got seven out of seven trades. Great. Settle down. Okay. And things might change, and if they do, don't get, don't be bothered by it. Just don't lose a lot of money either, right? And then, like we were talking about, uh, I think it was Ray's portfolio too. Like you know, building a long-term portfolio. I'm like, that's cool, but you, but be prepared for it to not work. 
on the timing issue. It may work. It probably will work. It has worked in the past. This might be the wrong year for it. This might be the wrong economic conditions for it. This might be fantastic, but we don't know. But remember that if you're building a portfolio that it may take a year or two to build this and it may get frustrating. Can you handle can you handle 100 trades of which 70 are break even? Okay. So Julie says, yeah, we're too excited. Well, but on the flip side, you also don't want to get too down on yourself. You always have to know where you fit in all of this, right? And that's why I'm like, all right, made the money, vacation time, walk away. And then now with a different psychology, because now you come back, it's the middle of June, I come back and I don't even think this anymore on the left-hand side. I'm thinking, okay, the right-hand side is going to look a lot more like what we have now, which means between now and next Thursday, there may only be 100 pips for the entire week. We are used to doing that in a, in a London session, like 100 pips is like child's play. And then all of a sudden now, 100 pips might be the entire week. So if you keep trading like you used to, you are likely to get different results. And here's the worst part of it. Because you get different results, even though you're doing the same thing, then you change the thing you used to do right, and now you start doing new things, which will make you a bad trader. Because now you're going to start mixing things up. Oh, well, I guess the moving averages don't work anymore. Oh, I guess the pivot points don't work anymore. Oh, I guess uh, the pa this pattern doesn't work anymore. Oh, well, I guess everything is uh, fundamentally different now. And you're like, oh my God, you just threw away months and months and months of progress as a trader because you expected the same thing to happen in mid-June as mid-May. And guess what? That's not right. It's not right. And you can come out of this. And here's, and I've seen this many times too. You go into summer, pretty good, pretty confident, pretty profitable. You go through summer. And by the time you hit, let's say September, you've lost all your confidence. You've stopped trading properly. And you miss all of September and half of October. And you're like, oh my God, I missed it. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Have you ever watched a thousand pip move and not participate? Has anyone listened to me plan a thousand pip trade and then not do it? it sucks. But you have to recognize that part of our psychology. Okay? You have to recognize it right? You can't run away from it. You can't hide from it. You can't pretend it doesn't exist. So now you have to change gears and literally trade differently, but not changing the methodology, so to speak. All you're doing is changing your expectations. And you're saying, okay, well, on a weekly swing trade, this is the weekly swing trade, by the way. So that may have been just one trade and you're done now for the entire week. And if it doesn't hit that target, if it doesn't drop to 63 from 65 and some change, okay, 63 to uh, 63 to 65, right? That's 200 pips. But we know based on this week and last week, we're not likely to hit 200 pips. Okay. So you're like, is it because you're a bad trader? Did you do something wrong? No. Okay. But you should still trade you the way you normally trade in the sense like drop into smaller time frames. So instead of using a four hour, which I typically do, right? I, right. Maybe you use a one hour and instead of being in for a week, maybe you're doing more day trading or you're doing something like this. Like literally you sold here 
Okay, literally you sold here and you're done. Why? It's a lower high off a double top. It's so straightforward, it's boring. Double top, lower low, lower high, sold it, done, walk away. What'd you do this week? Well, I sold on Tuesday. Okay, but I want you to like, what, what is your intent? You must have in this situation, especially, specialize in one currency, guys, one currency, specialize in one currency. Do you love the Great British Pound or do you hate it? So now there's a bias. Okay. And then if you hate the pound, you're bearish on the Great British Pound. So now you're now you wake up in the morning, you're like, well, am I, am I going to sell pound dollar? Am I going to sell pound Swissy? Am I going to sell pound yen? Those are three great trades you can look for every single day. And now the fundamentals or market conditions or trader psychology either supports your hypotheses for the outcome and future valuation of the Great British Pound versus everything. So basically, you've created an index of Great British Pound. Okay? And you're trading your own pound index down or not, or not traded at all. Okay, you, you see where I'm going? And now you can do that for the day, let's say, in the concept of where we're going in the week. Okay, so this is clearly a trade. Okay, and then now you're looking for, so this is what we did the other day, and then we did this yesterday, and now we're expecting a lower low. Notice that what's happening now is irrelevant. This is what we planned yesterday. Let me say that again. What's happening now is irrelevant because this is what we planned yesterday. So what are we thinking about tomorrow? Well, we're adjusting for per potentially a new slope. Ah, he says, oh, so, ah, so, right? We're planning out tomorrow. Oh, my God. Oh my God, Becky. Okay. Okay, you see? Isn't that cool? This is what you're seeing now. Amateurs are jumping on. Why? Because it's moving now. And really, it's yesterday's trade plan. Oh, did I say, it's funny, I don't even hear myself half the time, right? So, <laughs> which is funny because I just contradict myself too. But um, did I say, oh, Samuel, that's funny. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, how funny. Um, it's funny how I say that. <laughs> Yeah, old, yeah, Italian for sure. Cool, right? So lots of people are chasing this now, and they don't understand that you can casually plan this um, 24 hours in advance. And that you're already planning tomorrow. So a lot of people are going to trade this after it's already moved, right? So let's kind of put fold this in a little bit. And let's go out to the further one okay so um, 
you're a bear. Double tops, lower lows, lower highs. Okay, on a four hour. Cool. Seems to me there's more bearishness. Now, if you were a bull, and we talked about this for probably an hour yesterday or Tuesday or whatever it was, but this is very obviously a bullish area. Very obviously. So we're going to retest it and we might break it. We might not break it. We don't know the future. But you should know if you're a bear or not. Okay. And it seems to me I exited the long the longs because I've expected some shorts, right? So it's the risk off time, right? But the, more important to that, right, Meta, is that we constantly talk about the dance between the bulls and bears. And that is very symbiotic. The bulls and bears need each other. And it's simply the time for the bears to come in. And the I think the most amazing thing is we can talk about this in February. Okay? That this is going to happen. It's likely to happen. Therefore, you can plan for it to happen. But here's my point now. So as a bear, if that's your bias, okay, all the up is obvious. It's not... It's very likely, but it doesn't always happen. It could go, it could go fall out of position, but we know what out of position means and how to trade that. But a bull, a, sorry, a bear would expect this up. Isn't that the nice thing? This is why you don't chase price. Now, you might have sold here, okay, and you maybe got knocked out, but you're going to sell it again here. Remember, it was a weekly pivot point, a monthly pivot point, the roll reversal off the psych level. It's the lower high. One, two, three. Oh, my God. Obvious. Okay, cool. So let's go from here. Now you're making decisions on smaller time frames, right? And you're watching real body candles. And the reason you watch candles is because this is what you do. It's not that complicated, right? Now, if you're going to add another layer to it, what you see Is stuff like this and you might say it's choppy but then I say well if you look at it on a different time frame it's the same as right one down 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 up up sell down 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 on a daily chart might be like this on, on a four hour chart or an hourly chart down 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 up up sell down 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 up up sell down 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 up 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 down down buy right? Whatever, but certainly no more down. And then eventually lower, low, lower, high, lower, low, lower, high. And it's the same pattern repeated. We call this fractal, fractal geometry. So I'm giving you a little fractal geometry lesson here. Hope you don't mind. So we're moving from behavioral finance on Monday to fractal geometry today. Okay. And what you're seeing is simple moves on the macro level. Okay, an even higher macro level. And then inside of that, actually, let me do that in a different color. So there's that level. There's this level. And then inside of that, you're doing the micros. Down, 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 up, up, down, 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 right? Oh, 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 oh. Down, 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 up, up, down, 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 up, up. And you're hoping for this to play out, right? You're hoping for this move to pay off. And the whole time, all you're doing is this. When I was in South Africa back in whatever, was it, it's probably been four years now, the first thing I said is this is the pattern you need to memorize. First thing out of my mouth. That was the last time I've ever done any formal training. I only did it because Ryan asked me to come to South Africa. I'm like, okay. What city? Jo Johannesburg. Uh, okay. You and then when you're done, we can go see the lions and the tigers and the giraffes. We'll go to Kruger National Park. Um, that sounds really great. Always wanted to do it. I'd love to do it. I don't have time. I have to go back. <laughs> but I'll come to South Africa and hang with you. So anyways, uh, that's the pattern. And this represents your bias. Because if you're a bull, here's the pattern. 
That's it. That's the secret to success. KG says, are we taking profits uh, all the way down? That is your alpha. That is your trade plan. Because you can do this only. You can, uh, you can do this and this. You can do um, all of these, actually. So, so, like, let's really look at this. Okay, double top. How many people here agree that there's a high probability... Uh, to trade short if you're a bear. Have, have I ever just... Yeah, I do it all the time. Okay. There's, there's one... Uh, if you go to Ethic Street and you search for their 2007... International Traders Conference in Spain, I'm recorded sitting on a panel outlining a 5,000 pip trade that's going to happen 90 days from me doing the speech. I said, it's not going to happen now. It's going to happen in 90 days. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you what to look for. And let me tell you how far it's going to go. And I said at least 5,000 pips and I was wrong and went 7,000 pips. And I explained why and down to not quite the day, but it got to the point where the guy's like, he stands up and remember, this is an FX street thing. And he's like, oh my God, we should do a webinar that day. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't think it's going to be that exact day, but we know roughly based on um, 90, uh, 90 day treasuries, right? But anyways, so yeah, so all the time, but that one's recorded. Cool. Anyways. So, double top, by the way, we knew this was an exit zone. This is a, a, this is a June exit zone, which we knew two weeks earlier. You have to re remind yourself that. Two weeks earlier, we knew this was an out for the entire month of June. So, is there a probability that if it double tops, it's going to drop? Yeah, yeah, okay. So, inside these candles now, and I can't, uh, well, I'll have to do it. I'm going to have to make a very thin can um, arrow here. Okay. Okay. Let's start with this one. Down, down. Oh, can't see it. Hang on. It's very thin. Let me make it a little bit thicker. Let's make it dark. Okay. Down, 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 up, up. That's what that represents. So when people are like, how do I trade? Well, there you go. That's probably five hours worth of price action. Maybe six, not likely six, more like five hours. That's it. You're like, how do I trade? Well, you know it's going to go down. Why? You're a bear. And if it goes up and you're a bear, you don't trade. So you, let's say you assume or you're preparing for the downward move. Great. And then you should also prepare for the up, up. Why? Bears sell high. On a 15 minute chart, there's probably two or three or four green candles. And you're like, yes, 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 that's what I wanted. Yes, that's what I was looking for. I was patient, I was disciplined, but a bing, but a boom. That's what you're looking for. No, you're not predicting the future. You're, you're preparing your actions for the future. Okay? Then you get it down, down. What's next? Up, up. But you're a bear, so what are you going to get next? Down, down. What's next? Up, up. Okay? Then you get your down, down. But we hit this support. And notice it went from, right, red to green. So obviously the support was important. I think you probably would have known that. Pretty basic technical analysis. But anyways... So let's move next. Okay. Then there's a down, down, up, up, sell, down, down, up, up, sell, down, down, up, up, sell, down, down, support, out. Or the up, up, up takes you out. This giant green candle takes you out of this real body. Okay. 
Then you get sort of, and here's the thing, this is the fractal geometry. You ready for this? I'm going to change the color a little bit. What happens next? Down, 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 up, up. Okay, that's the fractal. It's the same thing you did over and over and over on these tiny candles, which you could should could have should have been trading on 15 minute charts. Now has happened on the four hour. Okay, or even daily because on the daily you don't even see all this nonsense over here. On the daily, it's just this. Okay. Right. I don't know if it worked, but certainly weekly. Okay, so that whole move, right, is like this. That's it. Okay, now here's what's going to blow your mind. Let's say you're a long-term bear, and you believe by the end of the year we're going to be closer to here than up here. Okay, that's your analysis. And by the way, that's all you need. Right? Okay. So here's the interesting thing. Even if you're a bear, on the higher time frames, before you get the long-term bearishness, you're probably going to need something like this. And that's what I call summer. Come on, drawing tool. There we go. Down in June, up in July, down in August kind of idea. And then you anticipate the lower low going into the end of the year. I'm not, I'm only saying if you're a bear, Alex, right? So you might think about that risk event, which is the election, right? You might think of it differently. You might think if Biden wins, the stock market comes down. If Trump wins, the stock market comes down, whatever, right? If, if Trump wins, he'll ruin everything. So you might think stock market down. Or if Biden run, uh, wins, you're like, oh, we're going to go from socialism to communism, <laughs> whatever. I'm not saying that's Biden, but you might think that. Apparently, if you kind of spend some time on the Internet, there's all kinds of crazies thinking about all kinds of crazy things. So you, you might live in a world of, look, everything I know, everything around me, everything I read, everyone I talk to tells me it's the end of capitalism as we know it, and this is coming down. Cool. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to influence what you think, because if you were working for me or if you were trading my money, I want you to make decisions because I might be wrong. If you do what I do, then I don't need you. OK, so I don't want to influence. Right. So your alpha might be Kiwi dollar comes down hard by the end of the year. Cool. Right on. Another uh, another covid, another trade war. Um, um, you know, whatever that all of that is possible, right? Okay. And if that's true, you get this right. What I'm telling you about is you might have thought how awesome this was. And I said, okay, that was great. We talked about it, planned the whole thing. It's going to stop now. Right here, it's going to stop. That's good information to know, right? The next part is just because it's fallen and may continue to fall, hundreds of pips doesn't make it bearish yet. So now you got to look at multiple time frames, what we call fractal geometry, and say, well, on the one hour chart, we got a double a double top, lower low, lower high sell. OK. But Grandpa, Grandpa Elliot, Grandpa Wave says that's going to happen on multiple time frames. 
So on this time frame, we will also need either a lower high, lower low, or a double top, lower low. So we might have, let's say, till the end of the week, drive this down. Next week is up, and the week after next week is down. Holy crapola! We're talking about the rest of this week, next week, and the week after next week. And the week after next week, snack week after, and then the week after, the week after, the week after next week. Okay. Okay. Coolio, right? So I'm, I'm challenging you to think of the market differently. Here's a weekly trade. See, when I look at this, if I only looked at this chart, I have a couple of problems. First of all, if I'm a bull, we're getting pretty close to that, so that bothers me. Okay, but I'm also going to play this. Whoop. So let me mark all of this as, let's say, a big player might. He's not going to use that. Come on. Man. Okay, so you're a big player now. You're a big dog. You're a corporate CFO or something, okay? And you're trying to plan the rest of the year, okay? I'm like, okay, I see the bottom. I see the top. So here's what I think is going to happen, um, right? We have the up, 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 up. We have the down, down. And we'll probably take it north there. Or we're going to take it north here. So you just planned out the next, let's say, two weeks on the first one and six weeks on the second one. And you're done. <laughs> Meanwhile, you might make 200 and 92 trades in that same time period. And what I'm trying to teach you is don't forget what other people are looking at. They might see two trades in the next six weeks. You'll see 292 trades. And I don't want you to think it's going to do this forever. Because for it to really truly to make a downward move, you're going to need an upward move on a smaller time frame, which then creates the downward move, so on and so forth, fractal geometry. But the nice thing is, it's just that. It's just that one pattern. Okay, so if you were trading this, and let me get rid of, uh, let me get rid of that horizontal line. Okay, if you were trading this, wouldn't you kind of do something like this? Ah, no, wrong one. Wouldn't you do something like this? Wouldn't you expect a 3A2 Fibonacci retracement? Yes, Daniel. Well, it's enough for everything. So for this to happen, okay, you're asking it to drop from 65 to 62-ish, somewhere between 62 and 63, okay? And the reason I went off this is I'll show you how price action works. Here's kind of the secret truth of it all. It all it's all related. So you know you want to buy somewhere between the 3A2 and 618 Fibonacci retracement, and you're like, oh, well, that's a roll reversal. I know, right? So you might want to pay attention to what might happen around 63. We don't know what's going to happen around 63. But I want you to recognize that it might be a slow road down and then a slow road up. And if you don't see the other traders in the market, you're, you're likely to almost be like late on everything.
you're looking to your charts to tell you what to do. And that's a very precarious place because the charts don't know what humans are going to do before they do it. Okay. They can't, they can't think, but they can just pump out colors. Okay. So you can say, well, this might be a very interesting move. Okay. And that might be three weeks of bearishness. Okay. And for a lot of people, they're like, look, the market's been down for three weeks. It's going to fall all summer. I'm like, well, it's been down for three weeks, so someone's probably going to buy it. Uh, nothing has ever happened at an EU economic summit. Okay. Here's what they do. They meet, they drink, they drink wine, they smoke cigarettes. They, uh, they, right. And then what? They send out a press release and they say they agree to work together. They agree to work more closely together. Nothing happens. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nothing happens. All right. It used to be there used to be some internal politics, like when Lagarde was finance minister of uh, France. And what was that guy's name that was the finance minister of, um, of Switzerland? Um, I can't think of the guy's name, but they were both really smart and they were both going after the IMF job. And all of a sudden, like a dead hooker shows up in his hotel room <laughs> and Lagarde gets the job. I'm like, that is the oldest political trick ever. You're like, uh, well, we're reviewing your application to head the IMF, but we have a problem with that dead hooker in your hotel room. <laughs> Was it Han? Yeah, that seems about right. I'm like, oh my God, what? That's old school, right? And that kind of stuff doesn't happen anymore, I don't think. Yeah, it's an OG move for sure. Oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and so he loses the job. He loses his reputation. His career is thrown in the toilet. And then they're like, uh, he's innocent. <laughs> he's innocent, but he's ruined. Yeah, no, it's really good. So, um, so those kinds of things used to be quite exciting, right? Strauss Kahn. There you go. That's definitely it. Not that's definitely it. Thank you, Javier. Yeah, Strauss Kahn. And so anyways, so like Lagarde now is in charge of the ECB, but he would have been in charge of the ECB by now because he would have done the IMF for what, three years and all of a sudden then take over the ECB. So this was all sort of pre-planned. And Strauss Kahn would be leading the European Union uh, and and not Lagarde. So that's why I'm like, you better watch out. You, you, what you, <laughs> you better be nice to Lagarde is all I'm saying, right? So you should look, so like, does that kind of stuff happen anymore? Nah, millennials are just sit and cry. They'll wait. <laughs> I, I want to be the head of the IMF because I'm smart enough and I'm nice and people like me. Right? Like, dude, if you ain't willing to kill for the job, you're not qualified. That's all I'm saying. Right? I mean, requirements to be the head of a major financial institution. A, you went to Harvard. B, you have a finance or economics degree. And C, you're willing to kill somebody for the job. If you got all those three things, good chance.
<laughs> yeah, I'm up next, right? I mean, the other way to play it is, did you go to Harvard? No, I went to Yale. Do you have an economics degree or finance degree? Yes, I do. Third, are you willing to kill somebody for the job? Well, I'm willing to kill you. Very nice. We'll accept the Yale thing. <laughs> Yeah, um, going back, yeah, so the, someone asked about the weekly. Yeah, I don't tend to do this far out, but you should know. And I, I'm trying to teach fractal geometry, so I'm not putting you into a trade. You have to understand I'm teaching you how to think. I'm teaching you how to be a trader. So I got all this crap in here. Anyways, I'm trying to teach you that um, you should, for every down there's likely to be an up and we don't know if the up is going to be high or high, but there's going to be an up. So the up for a bear is this. Okay. The up will create a down. So it'll either double top, right? Or the up will be lower, high, lower, low, but this is just simply a bearish point of view. And a bullish point of view is, and by the way, again, this is where I got out of a bullish market. We were bullish this whole period. And then I exit and then I tell you, I'm still a bull. I'm just not a bull now because it's not good market conditions to be a bull. But I might be a bull here. And why would I think that after it dropped for five weeks in a row? Oh, well, because the price is low. And nothing else has changed. Now, if something else changes and you know, uh, the U S shuts down again. Okay. Boom. I'm going to, I'm going to buy this, but all else being equal. Like if things don't radically change between now and the end of the year, I will at least consider buying this. Doesn't mean I have to. And what does that mean? Well, the down created my up. I'm a bull. So I buy low. I'm up here. I'm as high as you can possibly get. So, right. So I need to come down. I mean, look at this. Like for what, two hours, it made a lower low. And for about two hours, it balked at the top. Like, look how long this was. Okay. So imagine at some point, if you took the risk here, or took the risk here, or took the risk here, depending on how much you have, three pregnant nuns in a row, you're like, you know what? Boom, I'm out. And by the way, this was the exit we had for June and we knew that weeks in advance. So we're like, well, of course, time to get out. I mean, of course, of course, of course, there's going to be some red and there's probably going to be some green again somewhere in the near future. But I sure, certainly would like to see a pullback to the 3A2 or a pullback to the 5 or a pullback to the 21, pullback to 50%. So I'm looking at it all these different ways, pull back to the roll reversal. And I'm looking at like, okay, between 64 and 62, I might be a buyer again. But what I'm afraid of is you make all your decisions on a 15 minute chart. And because, because PPI came out worse than expected and all your decisions are inside of this, and you don't even know what that is. Okay. Thank you, Daniel. Hey, Sharif. So do you understand, like, understanding the importance of this candle could make you a better bearish trader? And understanding that that candle is likely to show up soon will make you a better bullish trader. So now you could say, well, I might be short a couple of weeks into this price zone. First challenge is going to be the 5 EMA. The second challenge is going to be the 21 roll reversal. So somewhere between the 3A2, right, which is the 5 EMA, and the 50% 
it's likely or it's very possible not even likely let's just say it's very possible that this goes up so as a bear now you're like you can tiptoe short for the next two or three weeks until you approach these prices and then maybe you back off and it's hard to back off because you see the market coming down and then you turn on CNBC and Bloomberg or you read the Financial Times or Investor Business Daily or the Wall Street Journal or whatever you do, Fox Business, and they say, oh, the market is down because, because of this reason or that reason or this other reason and that's what's happening and blah, 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 and it's all ridiculous nonsense. It's all ridiculous nonsense. Okay. It's all ridiculous nonsense. Okay. So you think of it this way. You either believe the U.S. is going to shut down their economy again or we've made it through the worst. That's it. You have to make a decision between now and next year what GDP will be. Now, do you guys remember, uh, I did this on the FX Bootcamp channel maybe Four weeks ago, ago I, I did my, I don't know what you want to call it. I guess it's sort of like a podcast. I'm going to call it uh, Off the Charts with Wayne McDonald. I guess it's more of a podcast. It's me with a newspaper and a cigar sitting in my backyard. And I explained why I thought GDP was going to be like 5% next year. 4%, 5%, huge GDP next year. Did anyone see that? Made it? Anybody else? Well, make sure you subscribe to the FX Bootcamp YouTube channel as well. Nobody else? Seriously? I don't remember which one it was. I think it was like three weeks ago. Four weeks ago. Okay. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. So that means in this move here, that was my thought process. And by the way, on the way down here, every single day I, I said, create a list of 10 companies you want to buy simply because you think they'll be around in 25 years. Most of those stocks have at least doubled now. Okay. And so then we get this move here. So this is me talking about GDP. Now, to get a 4% GDP during a recession, it's actually pretty easy. Because to get the 4% GDP, it's relative to the previous GDP. Okay? So imagine if you were down 20% of something, and then you're up 10% next, what's the percentage change? So you're down 20%, up 10%, you're, so you're still losing money, but what's the change? What's the percentage change? Uh, 
<laughs> no. Uh, you guys are going to have to do the math. Okay. Maybe ask Google. Maybe there's your homework today. Figure that out. It's not a negative number. It's a huge positive number. Okay. Okay. And it's not 10% either. But anyways, do the math. Uh, but the thing is, it's a big positive number, even though, okay, even though in reality, it's not a big deal. Statistically, it, it, it looks bigger than it really is. Like, I'll give you a different example. If you lose 50% of your trading account, how much do you need to make to get back to zero? To get to zero, back to no change. You need a 100% improvement to get back to no change. You see what I mean? Just to get back. So you're still where you were. So, but you had to do a hundred percent to get there, but nothing's changed. So nothing's changed. So like, think of it this way. If GDP fell by 50%, you need a hundred percent. You need to double the productivity of the entire country to get back to where you were. So you might get the statistic like, oh my God, GDP is up 100%. And you're like, well, we're just back to where we were in 2019. So like, who the hell cares? You see what I mean? <laughs> to, to be back at zero. So what's the big deal? You're like, you're back at zero. Well, it's not even a big, it's not even a big, I mean, so like nothing happened, but you had 100% to recover from 50%. So if we just go back, just to, so imagine that, uh, if we go from like a negative, a small negative GDP to a small positive GDP, this is significantly in a percent of significant percentage change. So anyway, so we have terrible GDP. It's terrible. It's the end of the world. But we're going to have some kick ass GDP numbers next year because they're going to compare it to 2019. I mean, 2020. So, right? You see what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Well, and how about this? Hung up on like, I have 90% winners. Right? You get this guy and then you're like, yeah, but you make no money. <laughs> okay. So how would you like to someone that makes 60% winners but makes big money. Which one do you want? Do you want the big no, the big money winner that loses 40% of the time? But lets the winners run and keeps the losses small? Or do you want someone that just scalps 19 pips, 8 pips, 12 pips, 13 pips, 22 pips, 90% winners? But they make no money. <laughs> I have 90% winners and I make $2 per winner. Yay, good for you. And, and then of course, these, these guys that try this, problem is you'll see their average winner is 12 and their average loser is like, I'm not joking, 433. I've seen lots of people that do that and they suck. I've analyzed maybe 10,000 traders. Ah, that, that sounds outrageous. I've, I've analyzed 1,000 traders for sure. And high winning percentages is a huge, huge indication of a loser. There's a lot of paradoxes in trading, guys. Okay. Another one is a big winner. Okay, a big winner. If you see someone that's produced, let's say, 
uh, I don't know, some big percentage. Uh, I'll say 100%. As soon as the market conditions change, they're so psychologically attached to what they've been doing because it, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy in of itself because you're risk on and you're so bullish and you wrote books on, uh, let's say the US dollar is worthless. Okay, let's do that one. You've wrote books on the US dollar is worthless, that fiat currencies are over, that the blockchain is the future of the world, that no one, that the you're going to wipe your butt with hundred dollar us bills because debt's too high and borrowing right and all this kind of stuff and what else so you've wrote books you've been on cnbc but more importantly because of all these things because of the 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 publicity that you've attracted people that believe in that same thing have congregated around you gave gave you their money and, and they say we agree with you but you're the expert so you sell the hell out of the dollar for us because we work we believe it's crap and soon as the dollar turns strong you have zero incentive to change and you go from your awesome period of dollar weakness to you lose everything when the dollar gains strength because you're so tied in to that one thing what you re the real message you need to hear from a coach like myself is that any sophisticated investor, especially institutional, they want to see how you behave through different markets. Okay? Sometimes the dollar is going to be strong, sometimes the dollar is going to be weak. And seeing how you adjust through the peaks and troughs is what they care about. Any idiot can sell the U.S. dollar in a bullish market. Now, most people don't even understand that. Well, if the market is bullish, why would you be selling the U.S. dollar? Fail, you're not a trader. Now, once you get that, then you have to be able to do it. But nobody's interested in that. So when you go to, up to somebody, you're like... I, you know, I made 100% last year. I made 200% a year. I mean, you know, whatever. Nobody cares. No sophisticated investor says, well, you made 100% last year, so I'm going to make 100% this year. Statistically speaking, you're more likely to lose money. So when someone looks at your trading, they look at the bigger market. And let's say this is weeklies. And so this is like, six years of trading they're much more interested in how did you see this this change how did you see and more importantly trade when in this changing period and how did you adjust in this period and they look at the peaks and troughs but dude anybody can buy that anybody dude that's so easy but the tip the typical thing is um the, the dum-dums catch that because it's obvious, but they don't catch this. And so they give it all back or right. And then they don't catch this. And this is what institutional investors look for. The troughs, the peaks, the troughs. And they look at like the political cycle, the business cycle, um, seasonality. All these things are much, much more important than like your winning percentage no one gives a crap nobody cares except an amateur trader but they are interested in how how much risk do you need to take to make a dollar do you risk ten dollars one dollar or ten cents this is what's interesting and when market conditions change how well do you do? So I want you to think this way. I want you to think this way. This is the way I want you to think. Daniel, it's just math. Do the math. Okay, and then you'll have to also take it through future value, right? So the value 
of a thousand dollars to like the today's value of a thousand dollars you make 10 years from now is not a thousand dollars. So like your billion dollars you're going to make in 30 years might only be worth 220 million today. Well, apparently five trillion a day is your maximum. That so it's it's sort of a silly question. So I I, I know you're I, I I don't mean to shut you down like that. I mean you're a good person, and you're loyal and respectful. Um, but I, I I would caution you on even the thought process. Okay. So again, it's sort of an NLP thing. You're you're talking the wrong message to yourself. Uh, you will be offered the opportunity, Anthony. Okay. But we got some amazing things I can't tell you about right now. So the most important thing is when you join, you will potentially have the opportunity to be in all the new amazing, awesome things I can't tell you about. Okay. It's a foot in the door. Hey, Tony, get your foot in the door, huh? So anyways. All right, so I got to go. Yeah, it's late. Got to go. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah, just be careful, Daniel. All right. Cool. So now I hope you look at a chart like this, which we were scalping short. Do you guys remember this two days ago? Right here, I taught you how to scalp. So you could have made 40 trades here, or you could have made one trade here. But do you understand that this is, it's all the same trade? Like if you, can't, if you can't plan this, you don't have what it takes to do all of this. Because you, you don't know what's happening. So you might be a buyer here, and you might be a buyer here, and you might be a buyer here. Like, I don't know what you're doing. If you can't plan this, you're not going to trade any of this. Okay? So move this to a 30-minute. Okay? You see? Uh, 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 uh. And then inside of all of these... Are much smaller moves, right? Let me get rid of that fib. It's distracting. Oh, it's an object, isn't it? Fib, 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 fib. Delete it. Cool. So, um, look on this five-minute chart and ask yourself if you are only a bear. Okay. Only a bear. Your stop's just above here, right? Can, can you see all these moves? Okay. Lots of little trades. Okay. My worry is you missed the fact that it double topped and dropped and you're buying and stuff. Okay, like there's the highest high, lower low, there's a lower high, lower low, there's a lower high, right? Like my my worry is you're buying in something that's obviously bearish in the moment. And if you're a bull, you should just walk away. When? How how long should you wait? Um well, wouldn't it be cool if let's say my price pivots turn bullish? Right? See how this is in a channel down? And, and yesterday it was in a channel this way, if you recall. Wouldn't it be nice if you had a series of higher highs and higher lows? Well, that's all you're waiting for as a bull. 
Okay. But the more interesting part is being a bear. So on the higher time frame, there's the top, there's the lower low, there's the roll reversal, right? You go farther out now. Okay. When, right? We know this is overbought in here. Now you're waiting for the lower low. Then you're going to sell the lower high. And here's your lower low. By the way, let me take you through technical analysis. This is exactly the price a bull would buy. This is exactly the price a bear would sell. And if you remember, I drew all this and said this is where pigs get slaughtered. You guys remember that? And what's going to happen next? Well, between 24 and 23, you're going to get a bounce. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Why make it complicated? Mm -mm -mm. So trading this, selling this now is really simple or, or silly, right? But here's the interesting thing. Did you miss this? And why? If you said, well, I, I was a bull and I bought here, I'm like, that's a great trade. Did you make money ultimately? No. Could you have? Yeah. But ultimately, did this, did that buy make money? No. But that's an awesome trade if you're a bull. Okay. And here, bear. This is it. In the training course, this is the ultimate, most obvious, straightforward, bearish weekly swing there is. It's the basics. My book I wrote now well over 10 years ago talks about this number specifically. And it says it's going to go down to this number. So I think if you miss this, it's because you're a bull or you don't trade this pair. Okay. And that's that. If you're a bear and you trade this pair, um, if you miss that, you didn't do your job. Okay. That's it. Okay. So if you recall this one, I was teaching you how to predict the head and shoulders pattern. And we took this, we went from the top of the neckline to the bottom of the neckline. And then I moved this from the bottom of the neckline to here, right? And then I adjusted to the pivot zone and to the two standard deviations from the mean. Okay. But on this pair, we said this is definitely where a bull would buy. The danger is it's a lower low, but if a bull's going to try, they're going to try. And if there's a bear, they're going to sell this. And if I recall, I think we did this when we were still down here. I'm not 100% sure if this was Monday or Tuesday. But the idea that you use the left shoulder and use the M3 to predict the M1 move. Okay. And maybe you have this as the neckline. So let me redo that. That makes sense because it's technically a crown, not a head and shoulders. So I have it set for head and shoulders, but it should be off the, the neckline because it's a crown. And let's see if that's better. Can't grab it. Uh, neckline is here. There we go. Okay. So... According to this setup, not me, not my opinion, 1350 down to 110, 350 pips. Okay.
And if you're new to all this, you're like, wow, all of that's amazing. Maybe you would need to visit FX Boot Camp and take advantage of the 76.4% uh, discount. So I got to go, guys. It's been real. I love you, babe, but I got to jump. Please visit Trader's Way. Open up a demo account simply to thank them for sponsoring our community. Please subscribe. Please like. That means click the little thumbs up button. And please leave comments on the videos. At least just document. Right? Wait, Mr. Heibel got blocked? Why did Mr. Heibel get blocked? What did he say? Anyways, um, please like, please. Oh, yeah, leave a comment on the recordings. Simply document what you learned because later on you can search your comments and pull up specific videos. So if this was good on a head and shoulders, you might say, uh, I, I like the head and shoulders analysis and maybe even document the time that it occurred. Okay. And therefore, three years from now, when you're going you're like, oh, that head and shoulders one and you do a search, you can pull up the exact YouTube video that I did out with this analysis and you can say or you can say or crown in case this is actually a crown pattern not a head and shoulders i don't care with the name to me it's all the same but uh i think that would be helpful if you did that and, and why the hell is mr hype <laughs> blocked he's one of our most loyal members Carlos is blocking him. What? Oh, wait. Carlos is being blocked by Mr. Highvolt. Oh, well, why is Carlos being blocked? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, Carlitos. I don't know what he's saying. But anyway, I just log in. Yeah. Oh, are you all right, buddy? Those hair transplants hurt, huh? <laughs> well, I hope everything's right, buddy. So I'll see you tonight, right? So tonight, guys, remember, we're going to get, what, three presentations of various central bank reports. Yeah, yeah, I did that just the other day. And you know what? I went to the thing, and they made me wait an hour. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, you sons of biatches. You know, they're going to come in and say, well, it's so tough with COVID. And I'm like, dude, there's been three people here the whole hour. What do you mean tough? Anyways. Uh, Wayne, can I please pay with Bitcoin? A country box, I know, money? Uh, for what, FX Bootcamp? Yeah, email me, wayne at fxbootcamp.com. I love a Bitcoin, huh? Do, do the templates, uh, the basic $5 package includes like let's see um let's do like it would look like something like this okay you got your your weeklies you got uh sorry monthlies weeklies moving averages um let's see that might not there might be a better one. Um, you get like this. Okay. Um, this stuff here is for part of the um, expanded uh, toolkit. I think, right? Uh, like automatic Fibonacci, which is pretty cool. Um, trading sessions. Okay. That's pretty cool. So like, look at these like market opens, man. Dude, seriously. You don't trade market opens. <laughs> what? Anyways, um, like just like look when the mo money moves, dude. Right? Just look when the money moves. Just look at it. Look at it! Don't you turn your back on me! Look at this. This open, and then this open, 
and then that open, and then this open, and that. I don't know how it works. Look at this open takes it down, this open takes it up, that open takes it down, this open takes it up. So anyway, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Those are trading sessions, right? Uh, what else is on here? Uh, template. Oh, let's do it here. Uh, template. Um, I don't think I have this one set up. Uh, I did. I had the other one. Um, and then zero lag moving averages are kind of neat. So here's your 21 EMA adjusted in real time. So here's the real 21 EMA. And here's the 21 EMA updated in real time. Wow, wow, wow. So you could do something like, um, you can do this. Create your own template any way you see fit, but you could do something like this. And say statistically it's important where you are on this chart. Okay, gives you a guide. Stop being a bear, start being a bear, right? So now you get something like, if you're, remember, you should already be a bear. You shouldn't become something because you saw something on your chart. That's lame. But seeing consolidation here and you're already a bear, down, 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 up, up, sell, down, 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 right? And you might, each one of these might offer potential um, setups and then you're like, oh, not anymore, but maybe, right? So whatever. So there's some pretty cool tools on there in the complete toolkit, but that's, it's not necessary. So like I like the automatic trend lines, right? One of the reasons I like the automatic trend lines is it's multiple time frames. Okay. Medium term, it's more bearish. Shorter term, it's very bearish. So you can look at it as this was very bullish. Then we topped out lower low, lower high. And now we're increasing the acceleration to the downside. It was bullish a couple of weeks ago, then it turned bearish, and now is increasing its bearishness. Cool. Thank you, statistical analysis. So that's like that kind of stuff's in the complete kit. But if you want the standard operating procedure, like um, no, that one's not there. That's the price action one. That's not there because I just made it. Um, like pivot points monthly, for example. That's in the $5 kit. Where So this is the whole thing in June. I said right in here that we're going to have a, a June that comes out red, heart, red hot. We're going to be out of position. We are going to hit our targets early. Right? And then what? We're going to lose volume and volatility. Right? Up, 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 up. Look at the accuracy here. So yeah, that's in the $5 kit. Cool. Yeah, I saw that, Mr. Heifel. I'm like, wait. Carlos was blocked by Mr. Highball. I thought it was the other way around there. Right? So anyway, I'm like, oh my. Anyway. So is he unblocked now or? <laughs> I figured Mr. Highball was on meds or something. So I don't know how if you can unblock him if he's blocked. I'm going back in time. Um, oh, so you just timed him out. Okay. So hopefully he's all right. All right. So guys, I got to jump, babe. It was real. Peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. Brinsley says the $5 cost too much, right? Uh, Barry, I was actually answering a specific question. 
So if that came off as a sales pitch, um, I didn't mean to. Someone asked me, are those included in the, the $5 thing? So I was trying to say yes. It's less than 400 bucks, Brinsley. And I don't even remember pitching it. But. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. $400 Rand. Yeah, well. Cool. Well, I can't do anything about that. All right, well, see you guys tomorrow. Thank you for being on my team. And then I'll see everyone in the live trading group tonight. Remember, so we got that presentation and then we're going to do some group work. Right on, Anthony. Oh, yeah. If you don't buy it on, when, on the first op, there's no second opportunity to get it. That's why it's called a one-time offer. So if you don't take it, there's no opportunity to buy it again. I might be the first person in the world that actually makes a one-time offer. <laughs> so anyways, 